everyone. Welcome back to my Let's Play of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. When we last left off, we continued on with the trial for Mr. Uh, what's his name? Natsume, the crazy guy who looks everywhere all the time like he's scared of the world. Um, and uh, everyone on the jury, no surprise, were like, yeah, guilty. Bam, 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 and threw all their fire up. So now we're doing the summation examination. Uh, we did the first one correctly we pitted him against uh this guy where we found out that the road that they thought he walked on there was actually construction so he couldn't have walked that way and it's a very elaborate discussion just to say he could have taken the other path personally that's my opinion i feel like it's it's a little bit of an overkill moment but it's okay i guess you gotta have solid proof for every conclusion you want to draw fair enough so we're gonna continue on today and figure out what the next contradiction is on the jury uh to put them against each other and we're gonna go from there so uh, i want to say thank you guys so much for your continued support of the series i know my upload schedule is kind of jank i try to do this at least twice a week um trying to figure out a balance for all my games as always i feel like i'm always trying to do that you know what i mean so uh but i appreciate your patience with that and uh yeah let's let's freaking go so uh if you said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes why it can only have been the victim pity sake the opity already admitted it himself didn't he uh attack from behind Collapsed before his eyes. Okay, so uh, let me go to the court record real quick. Uh, young woman right and I got to totally sad, but all green female style early. Ba -ba -ba, apart from the single stab. I was trying to see like if we had record of him saying whether or not she was wearing green or not. They may have already said that he said that himself. Olive green. Huh. Okay. So I'm guessing. So these contradict themselves, right? I guess he's saying that he did it versus she's saying she saw it happen. He saw it happen? I guess? Because neither of them are really saying she got attacked from the front or something. I mean, I'm mean, i going to guess it's... This is my first guess anyways. Because this guy's irrelevant. I mean, wh eh, whatever. So, he admitted it himself, didn't he? And then, no, he saw it with his own eyes. But he didn't admit doing it. Objection. Ah, the music's still going. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Hold it. Hold it. I'm sorry, but as foreman of the jury, I have to object. That's complete nonsense. What? I'm a banker, don't forget. An educated man. And there's no contradiction as far as I could see. Yeah, you fucked up, son. Quite so, Mr. Foreman. I will not permit a whimsical attack against the good members of the jury council. Ah, uh, there is nothing whimsical about it. It's very important to listen carefully to every juror, Mr. Naruhodo. Then you can decide where the contradictions really lie, if there are any. Okay, does that mean there aren't any? Can that be an answer? Okay, so it's not that. That was kind of a stretch, but that was the best I could do in that moment. Woman in green collapsed before his eyes. Poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. Uh... Not with the visit. Uh, I don't know. Missy attacked from behind, saw her collapse. Already admitted it. Um, I don't know, is it these two? Try uh press them again? Like are they saying something should be different? Hold it! Let me see. Uh excuse me, but aren't you oh no. Yeah, no. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. I think we have to pit people against each other. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my god. Thank goodness. 
Oh dear, yeah, we're fine. All right, sorry. Do I need to talk to these guys again? Oh, I can't. All right, so maybe it's the two women? Poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? Ah, uh, yikes. Woman in green collapsed before his eyes. It could only have been the... Uh, sure. Ah, uh, nope. Hold it. I'm sorry, but it's a bad but that but that a bad but that but that I'm a banker. Bro, I wasn't even calling you out. Yeah, yeah. I am listening. I'm using my ears. I guess my eyes, technically. Suzato. Attack from behind? Objection. Hold it. What the heck? Ah, why am I so bad? Wait, I'm not allowed to present evidence, right? Nah. I mean, people? Olive Green is found with the knife in her worldly the wound didn't prove fatal, but the woman remains unconscious in her hospital bed. Well, how does this one have anything to do with it? Did I talk to him yet? Hold it! Huh? Sorry? Fold it, you said. Fold what? Um, no, no. What I said was, hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? Oh, I guess I forgot to talk to this guy. I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day. Including the day you were all talking about. And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon. And it would have just been before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day. Including the day you were all talking about. Just before five, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. I think this guy did it. No, kidding. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? I saw a lady get stabbed! No. Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and donked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right. I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Juror number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Huh. Sorry. Extremely sick. Nah, nah. I'm quite all right now. Bang my head against the freaking desk. Okay. You've changed two of the jurors' minds, Mr. Naruhoto. Yes, just two more to go. Deliver the finishing blow now. It's time to turn the tables here. Wish I knew how to do a Suzato takedown. Suppose words will have to suffice for now. Okay, maybe that was what we're missing. Uh, what is his statement now? Whoa, 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 whoa. I slipped over that evening myself on Calabash Road. I knocked myself clean out, you know. Do they think she fell on a knife? Wait, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, wait, what does that contradict? Knocked myself clean out. Uh. Wait, is he... Hey, he's wearing green! Right? I mean, he would have had to have passed out right where the woman passed out, which doesn't really make any sense. Uh... Well, we know we have to use his by process of elimination, so... Uh... I guess this one? Oh, really? We're really gonna argue it might have been him. Okay, uh, those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, Council? 
Well, juror number two? Juror number six? My, whatever do you mean, sir? Yes, Santa. I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable! It's not like I was loud or anything. There is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are well aware of this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection. I don't remember what voice I gave her. <laughs> I'm just—I was like, I think it's just a high-pitched version of my own. But British? Can we really be sure of that, madam? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim, who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! My goodness, you, you mean? That's right. I'm referring, of course, to hard of hearing juror number six. Are, are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was a jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Uh, well, look at that. My goodness me. Uh, my goodness me, I can't. Oh, sorry, you need a pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was, in fact, juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my! Wait, so, uh... You idiot, old man! If you hadn't been so daft to speak roaming about there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago! I'm sorry, I don't know what voice I give you, sir. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days, huh? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat? Is it? Whoa. Hold it. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, gotta put the makeup on. My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Shit, thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to change your mind? Is it? Well... You and Santa have the same voice, man, because you're both Santa. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, let's go! Bippity boppity boo. Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather, lar ra uh, rather large shift in opinion. The eyes two, the nose four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Yeah! Objection! Shut up! <laughs> Vampire boy, I don't need you right now. Go home. Go sleep. Oh. Well, that seemed churlish of me to drink from my hollow chalice moments after raising an objection. Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. L Lord Van Zeeks? It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. 
Yet we have just witnessed him falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? Objection. Whoa! I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed. Stalwart Jura number five was undoubtedly repairing their road as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated, sir? That's, uh... I don't know what voice I was trying to give him. That's right, it took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. That's what I was trying to do, I keep getting southern. Now, my learned Nippioni's friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Ah, uh, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. You think he vaulted over a hole in the ground? What? Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh, me. Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? Needs to be gruffer. And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the sight of your works? Eh, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway, and we just turn any gentlefolk back when they come. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. That, my good friend, is an assumption. Ah! Is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. Yeah, that's the point that I was like, when well, he walked by and then dropped his books on her. Like, I don't... There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Ugh. Crushed. In a single sentence. I mean, unless he left them at the bookshop and that lady was bringing them to him. I don't know. And, old man? C cold man, you can talk! You said that at around 5 o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at that time? You trust this man to be aware of his surroundings? Oh, I, um, can't say as I remember. You, you don't remember? I mean, he blacked out on the sidewalk, I don't know. How about the wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man that the accused saw. But I would lay a thousand to one. Against you being able to prove it. Ah! How can I prove? Can I prove it? I don't know. Order! Order! Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself! My lord? If you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Yeah, honestly. Huh. I wanted to give this young foreign student a sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Bro, I already knew that, because they all vote guilty in a matter of five minutes. Ugh. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Time to chop off your head. Oh, shit. Oh, the cape's coming- Oh! So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What- what are you talking about? My lord. <laughs> the prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Granted! Bailiff! Bring forth the witnesses! It's... next witnesses? Mr. Norohodo, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember, one of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Alright, no matter who Van Zeeks brings to the stand as his witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki-san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over. Until I literally die on the floor. Uh, 
What the? Oh. I don't know what I was expecting to see, but it definitely wasn't that. Okay, witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Uh, I have only so many little girl voices. Uh, Raleigh Beat. Uh, Constable Raleigh Beat, sir. Nothing to report on the street, sir. Uh, okay. <laughs> she kind of looks like uh, Sailor Moon. And I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. Stop chewing on your helmet, dude. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no, it, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. Are they surprising? Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from rare days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check that meters are reading true, and they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet. I've had collapse long ago. But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobbies and Men of Honor. Sure. And a man of slumber. Brumch! Yeah! On the day in question. This man and his wife are walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it Rowley? Rowley? I don't know what your name is. Constable Rowley Beat, sir! Nothing to report on the street, sir! What a great witness he's gonna be! <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what's going on. Very good! I keep like sitting here in silence because I'm just baffled by like how they look like young children. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. Okay. But I thought it was foggy. How did they see? I don't understand. What the witnesses saw. It was our wedding anniversary and Raleigh was taking me out for a meal. There is no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, and then went for help at a nearby police box. It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Raleigh and I both saw him as clear as day. Sure. Well, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. But the way in which she said it, the person fell, then the other person scattered something. Like, you, the way she said it like that makes it sound like they purposefully scattered something. You know what I mean? Like, someone had taken his books and wanted it to seem like he had been there. So they put his books on the ground. Like, normally you wouldn't say it like that. You could be like, oh, the person ran away and, like, dropped something. You know what I mean? Not scattered, I guess. That's just me. The connotation's a little weird. Ah. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsumi at the scene. If their testimony is true, the alternative course of events that you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death knell, in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What do you know, bro? What an unfortunate beat chancing! And on your wedding anniversary, too! Oh, I know. But I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. 
Indeed. However, this cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to arrest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. How? They are testifying under oath that it was without doubt the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of this situation, I'm sure. Ah, except that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Yeah. Enough preamble! Counsel for the defense! Commence the cross-examination, please! Y yes my lord Scattered the books. Huh. It was our wedding anniversary while I was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Hold it! This is gonna be unnecessary, but I gotta you gotta press everything just in case. And you wanna get all the fluff text, you know what I mean? No time to change after work, you say? Are you also a member of the police, Mrs. B? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for strapping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Which of those are you, exactly? Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Raleigh looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you down the ground, doesn't it, darling? Oh my god, don't choke the man. Huh, what? Oh, I just finished my beats. Pat and I were heading back to the station. I was actually planning on getting cha changed there. Is is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, Raleigh. I much prefer you in uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear. That doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beat for the day, correct? That's right, sir, yes. Although, I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But policing is my life, sir. As long as I'm the private owner of this, I'll serve my city and my queen to the end. What's that now? My warrant card, sir. Proof that I'm a London copper. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it, as a reminder to us all policemen of our sworn duty. To patrol the streets of London and uphold the peace of the common man. Sir! And for such a noble cause, I cover 20 miles every single day without fail and without a grumble. Because I know that the plodding of my boots is all Londoners need to hear to feel safe and secure. So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But sir! Just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot of being married to a bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Oh, Pat. Oh, Raleigh. What is this shit? <laughs> oh, what a charming couple. Their young love is such a joy to behold. If a little uh, over the top, perhaps. And then, kindly describe what happened next. Get a room. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. Hold it! Wait, so they were in front of them and they the other two still didn't see them? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Two silhouettes? Two silhouettes? I, I don't know what the emphasis was there. That's right, they were coming towards us walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. There was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny, thin-looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in this print, and like Mr. Natsume. Or it could have been juror number six. Yes, unfortunately it does. And you are certain that at that time there was nobody else nearby. Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there are streetlights on Briar Road, you see. There was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Don't choke him. Huh, well, ah oh, yes, that's right. Of course, there was a light fog on the ground. But Briar Road is dead straight and you could see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's the street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. 
Before sleep takes a firm hold, your answer please, Mr. Beat. Are you quite sure of what you just said? Yes, sir! As a couple who spends all day every day keeping watch on the streets, I swear to it, sir! I miss you. As my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. El Rally. <laughs> El Rally. I keep accidentally going to British for her. Huh. They're still maintaining there was no one else around other than the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must be how it really happened. It's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. Thank you! I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? Uh, all of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. The other scattered something before running off. See, that just sounds weird. It sounds like these are two events that had nothing to do with each other. Like, one of them collapsed, then the other person just like was like, Alright, let me, let me scatter these books on the ground. Not like, ah, drop it and then run. You know what I mean? It's just weird. The wording is bizarre. Huh. Scattered something? What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Poor guy. Ah, whoa! Ah, yes, that's right. It was some old books. I see. Old books. <laughs> Thank you for that insightful comment. Yes, sir. The culprit had dropped a number of them all around where the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed, as clearly pictured in this photographic print. Uh-huh. That rotten Japanese man did that when he did the deed. Hold it! Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. It was the man in the dock without question, sir. The mouse the moustache, the hunched back, the cat-like eyes, the tall mouth, the snub nose. Everything. Uh, any more insults do you want to throw in? That's right. He looked down at that poor defenseless woman with those terrifying intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his books onto the pavement and ran away. Okay, that's that sounds normal now. I, I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now please, continue. Ye yes sir! Ye sir! <laughs> Not gonna do that. Uh, we ran straight over, of course, and then went for help at a nearby police box. Hold it! Okay. Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am the proud wife of one after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Poor guy's gonna die, man. Who? Huh? What? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. I asked Mrs. Beat to go. I was off duty by that point. But the Bobby's never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Um, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Doctor Who? Depends on a crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the beat the incident fell under so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh please, you're making us blush, isn't he, darling? Yeah, I'm sick of you two already, like, no offense. Yes, sir! What Patricia said, sir! Oh, let's move on, shall we? <laughs> as long as I don't have to do that stupid, Oh, Pat! Oh, Raleigh, every time I'm gonna lose my damn mind. 
It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Raleigh and I both saw him as clear as day. Yet he didn't see you? Is no one gonna be like, huh, that's funny. I didn't know sight was a one-way street. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. My bad. So that's it, is it? That's their entire testimony. What do you think, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. Beat saw what they say they saw. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? SOL, Naruhoto. The members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no, then what do we do? If Kazuma-sama were here... What are you trying to say? He would win this trial. I think he would try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their, within their testimony. What do you mean, somewhere else? Their statement about seeing Mr. Natsume is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But if you could identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them to make the jury doubt if the pair's memory of the day is accurate. Oh, right. Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in these statements somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. Ugh, why do I always seem to be so up against it? Okay, so not the last statement. Our wedding, uh, no time to change after work. Two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. The other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, then went for help at a nearby police box. Uh... Let me see. Can I be like, there's no footprints? No, probably not. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. Overview, let me see. East side. Sailor will see running away with a party officer. Huh. Reporting Officer Rowley Beat. I was gonna say, is he he not allowed to? I oh, I was gonna say, oh maybe he was actually the person who would report for it, which means they were someone else somewhere else in town. But that seems a little uh, bit of a stretch. Let's press this really quick and see if it gives us anything, because it might still change their dialogue. Uh, yeah. Just in case. But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas straight lamps, would you? We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Right. The light from the street lamps is more than enough. And my husband already told you that the fog was only light, didn't he? Uh, yes? And what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is, it is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own arm. Yes, all right, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain that it was that little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Huh. Weird. I don't know about that. Who? Ah, oh, yes. It was the accused and no mistake. The moustache, the hunched back, the cat-like eyes, the tout mouth, the snub nose. Unmistakable, sir. As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Soseki-san they saw running away from the scene of the crime. Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh, yes, of course. What is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we've told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony. Is that right? Is it? Well, out with it. What? No, no, no. Oh, no. It's, it's really not that at all. My husband's a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail. Everything. Like, like... Oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? 
I could tell you the names of every single one I could. Every single one. And you dare to question how reliable my testimony is. That will do, Mrs. B. Please don't kill your husband on the stand. No, it won't do at all. That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Whoa, Dahlia 2.0, let's not. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that Raleigh will. I, I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fists down. But perhaps you would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Mrs. Beat. Give us a statement that we can contradict. Might that appease you? Oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? Stop asking him that. He needs to not respond anymore. Alright, great. Uh, I could even tell you the names of the four books he dropped at the scene. Could you now? Yes, we know that there were books dropped at the scene of the crime, as you say. Those purchased by the accused at the nearby second-hand bookshop on the day in question. After I'd been to the police box for help, I... Well, I decided to have a good look over the area for good measure. I'm a proud policeman's wife, after all. I did it for Raleigh. And... What was your husband doing at the time? Oh, he was lying face down in the snow, getting some well-deserved rest. He works ever so hard, you know. Ever so hard. Don't you, my darling? Interesting way of guarding the scene of the crime. Face down on the ground. <laughs> well, Mrs. Beat, seeing as you've regaled the court with tales of your powers of recollection, would you be so kind as to recount the titles of the books you observed at the scene? I'd be happy to. Now, are you all listening? There was the picture of Monsieur somebody or other, and what's it yearnings? Then there was, um, a meal for someone, and the last one was definitely the thing of me something. You see? Yes, I see there are one or two holes in your memory. Oh, well, they were along those lines, I'm quite sure. There were indeed books found at this scene with titles along those lines, as you put it. Well, what did I tell you? So I think it's very mean the way you've been implying that my testimony can't be trusted. Don't you agree, darling? Uh, oh my god. Uh, anyone who upsets my Patricia will have me to answer to. Bro, put the gun down, man. Oh my god. I'm terrifying. Yes, she really is. So that's it, is it? That's their type. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes, I'm aware. There might be something with the books. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to look at it. Let me see what the statement is. Can you even tell you the names of the four books he dropped? Huh. Huh. I don't know. Oh, damn, we're at 43 minutes. Okay, well, I'm going to ponder on this. And we'll continue here next time. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry my voice for her was also not consistent. I was doing my best, though. There's a lot of, like, young girl voices I have to do, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know what... I don't know what's going on. There's something weird here, but I'll figure it out. Just gotta put my super sleuth head on. But yeah, uh, ba -ba -ba. as always, <laughs> feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe, whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.